He is the he, he is from Basquatch Hunter TV. Mike McKinstry joins us now on the Oakland County in, uh, Megacast. Mike, thank you for being with us today. Oh, of course, man. Appreciate having you on. How are you, and uh, and how have you been over the course of the pandemic? Oh, uh, well, that's a, a short question followed by a long question. Um, I'm doing good, and uh, it, it's been a long road. Well, I'll keep that one short for now. It's been a long road, as most people have. It's It's been a lot of adjusting, and it's been uh, a lot of trying to research and trying to not research at the same time, like trying to stay out of my head with the whole thing, but also trying to make sure I'm up to date with all the newest stuff that's going on with everything so I can move forward with the show. And uh, it's been tough. Mike, this is Ronnie. I will say I hadn't heard of your show prior to seeing you booked as a guest. So I went on and watched some video. How did you even start this? It's fascinating. <laughs> you know, it's the question I get the most and it's probably my favorite question to answer because, um, the, the whole the whole like basis behind everything I do, everyone always just assumes I do fishing and that's all I do. Um, my show is is way more than fishing. And the main point of what I do is to try to inspire people and motivate people. And I just found a different vehicle to do it, uh, which is the outdoors and fishing. So what started me to do this is I had a normal job like everybody else. I had a career in marketing. Um, I did 13 years in the marketing industry and I had a bunch of businesses on the side. I've, I've owned a restaurant. I've had a lot of other stuff like in the middle of that. And I never really found something that that really fulfilled everything I wanted to do. And and most people have jobs in order to afford to pay for their hobbies. You know, if your hobby is painting, then you know your job pays for you to be able to paint. Or um, if your if your hobby is cycling, then your job pays for you to be able to cycle. And I wanted to kind of do something different. And I wanted to do my my hobby for a living instead. And I was like, you know what? That's what would really make me happy. Is if instead of working just so I could do what I want to do, I want to do what I want to do all the time. And I, uh, I remember the day this happened, actually, I, I was doing a lot of meetings from um, the water. I was in my kayak doing a lot of phone meetings and I wasn't in my office that often. I was mostly on the water and I had a customer call me and I was in the middle of a really big meeting and right in the middle of the meeting, I caught a really big fish and he heard me get all excited. I was like, oh, I caught a huge fish. He goes, really? He goes, you know what? forget the meeting, send me a picture of that fish. I love fishing. Send me a picture of the fish you just caught. So we ended up talking for another hour just about fishing. And that's when it kind of hit me. And I was like, you know what? I need to be doing this full time. And I went back to my office. I, uh, I told my partners there, I was like, look, um, I've been here for 10 years and my 10 year anniversary is in two weeks. And that's going to be my going away party. And no one was really that surprised. Everyone kind of saw it coming because <laughs> they knew what I was, my passions were. Um, and then I started a YouTube channel and that's how I started everything is I just jumped into YouTube and I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I had a lot of history in filming, but I didn't really know what I was doing on YouTube. And uh, it, it took off. My format was just so generic at first and then it turned into something very unique and organic and people um, related to it really well. And then I got picked up by a streaming service two years later and then got a two year contract with a cable network in the, for this year, next year. and. You know, it just keeps on growing from there but i just wanted to follow happiness that's what i wanted to do and and stop following the paycheck and stop following you know the proverbial american dream and just follow my own dream instead oh my gosh i love that that's such a good philosophy in life how has this pandemic impacted you though have you had to put the brakes on everything oh yeah it slowed everything down so a big part of my show that i do like i mentioned earlier is um I want to try to inspire people a lot. So I do a lot of pay it forward segments in every episode. I do a lot of charity stuff. I surprise people with, you know, um, you know, free food. And we do like, uh, we handed out over 200 meals on Christmas. Um, like we do all these like really cool charity things. I try to give back all the time. Um, so the pandemic slowed down all of that because I can't go to schools and do my seminars. I can't do, um, like we had some things set up where we're surprising kids classrooms with all free fishing rods for full classrooms, um, for summer camps and, um, all my seminars and expos, like everything I canceled. So all the work we did to plan for filming for the season kind of went out the window pretty quickly in, in March. And then come June, we decided to start filming again and it's just one person crew and, you know, everything is really like stripped down. Uh, we can't film inside buildings. So everything has been a little bit more scrambled. We still are getting our, the job done. We're still doing what we need to do, but we've been working with, you know, one person crews or if we have a two person crew, then they have to stay distanced. And, you know, it's definitely changed a lot. A lot of my episodes I had planned got canceled um, and we're going to be filming for next season, hopefully. But yeah, it definitely changed a lot. The, the only good part about, um, 
this whole pandemic being locked down is that I work outdoors and it's also been easy to inspire people to go outdoors too, because if you're locked inside all day and you're not used to it, what better way to get outside than to go on the water and enjoy the nature, you know? So it's, it's kind of helped out some ways and it's, and it's just made us adjust a little bit differently. Mike McKinstry with us from Basquatch Hunter TV on the Oakland County Megacast. Mike, um, as the pandemic has gone on, a lot of shows have experienced production production shutdowns have not continued to bring out content or have ended up uh, going off the air or not releasing new content and then coming back several months later in a virtual sense what's the status of basquatch hunter tv are is, is that production sh has that been shut down is that continuing on because it's a small maybe a smaller production how are you continuing to provide that content to your audience despite the challenges of the COVID 19 pandemic um, so we've actually um, evolved and adapted, and that's what I do best. Um, I, I work with water, so I try to be like water and just evolve and adapt. And I uh, ended up taking a lot of the roles on myself. Um, I still have my producers working. Um, I have camera guys that are working just like on their own. Uh, we're all working from remote places, obviously. I'm doing a lot of the editing myself so I can keep it in you know, one room. And uh, we're still filming. We're still putting new episodes out. And like I said, it's the beauty of being outside is I can go out by myself and have a camera guy in another boat. So we're, you know, 25, 30 feet away from each other at all times. And uh, when we're done filming at the end of the day, I get all the footage emailed to me. So we're not even making contact. And then I go through it all and do a lot of the editing myself or send it to my editor via email. Um, so a lot of it's just adjusted. Instead of us all sitting in a production office together, um, and having a big crew out at once. We're just doing everything a little stripped down a little bit differently and we're still pumping out new content and still having great adventures. I mean, luckily the fish don't wear masks, so they're still biting. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's still been able to been able to happen for the most part. We've had to adjust a lot. We had a lot of episodes planned um, that I was really excited about to do this year that we had to put on hold um, because of the pandemic. I couldn't have a lot of the guests on, um, on the show. I couldn't really go and film inside of buildings. I couldn't travel as much. So a lot of my out of state videos got canceled. But other than that, everything's still going on. And, and like I said, we're not filming inside of a studio. So it's kind of the beauty of having an outdoor show is, you know, the outdoors is one of the best places to be right now. Mike, as you continue to, to make your content and you're on the water and you're outdoors engaging in nature, but the pandemic goes on and the summer months are, of course, well in the full swing and people are out and about. Are you noticing that the water is a little more busy this time of year than it normally would be for, for you filming this content? Is that... Uh, does that create new challenges potentially for your show or is that exciting for you to see uh, as people are engaging more in nature now with the pandemic continuing on? Um, so both. Um, it, it's great to see and it's also not that fun. So it, uh, it depends on what kind of traffic it is. On some of the smaller lakes that I film on and that I like to go to where uh, there's not a lot of boats, it's nice to see people out there kayaking and people out there um, enjoying fishing and, and just enjoying the water in general. Um, the bad part about it is the, like the double edged sword of it is I film during the week because the weekends are the busiest times on the water. So I kind of avoid that stay out of the traffic. Um, right now, people are home. So the weekdays are just as busy as the weekends. And you know, everyone's going out buying water toys because it is like the one escape you can still do. There was never really a shutdown. I mean, there was a temporary shutdown, but there's never like a full shutdown of being on the water. So people are going out buying jet skis and buying their boats. And, you know, there's been a lot more traffic and a lot newer people on the water. So the, the main difference is on the weekdays, it's just as busy as a weekend. But like like you were saying, too, it's a nice thing because I like to see people being able to get out and enjoy the thing that I love so much. Um, but it's also frustrating because now there's so much traffic every single day, seven days a week on the water. I mean, at, at noon on a Tuesday, the boat launches are full on a lot of lakes. So it, it's definitely changed a lot. And people are trying to find their escape and they're trying to get outside. Um, they're trying to find what makes them happy during this whole pandemic, which, you know, I, I can't do anything but applaud that because that's what we should all be doing is, you know, frustration and depression and stress has been just as, uh, as scary as the actual pandemic itself. So seeing people find their way out and, you know, their, their little, uh, little slice of heaven outside of all this chaos is kind of what I'm doing too. So, you know, it is nice to see people doing that. So for the new people who are taking up fishing through all of this, what tips and secrets can you provide them? Um, well, I can't give them secrets cause they won't be <laughs> secrets anymore. I'm just joking. <laughs> um, you know, and, and it's, it's actually a really good question, too, because a lot of people are getting outside and not knowing what to do. And and that's why I've been trying to, like, push a lot more on my social media um, uh, social media platforms about getting outside. And you can fish off the dock, off the shore. You don't need a boat even. Um, but the, the biggest thing I can remind people is um, to be patient. And 
it's something that we all take for granted in the fishing world because we've been doing it for so long most of us have and you just forget to be patient because you're frustrated and get irritated but when you're first starting fishing the number one reason why i think people don't stick with it and don't realize you know the relaxation qualities it has is because they get frustrated and they think they're supposed to go out and, and catch fish all day um and, and it's not called catching it's called fishing so it's supposed to be therapeutic it's supposed to be you know the the journey more than the destination and uh you know it, everyone can find their own peace, whether it's memories with their grandfather or with their father, um, you know, memories with their sons, you know, there's a lot of things that tie into fishing. That's more than just catching fish. And that's what I would remind everybody getting into it is that always look for more than just catching fish because there's so much more to, to take away from fishing. Mike McKinstry with us. He is, he is from Basquatch Hunter TV with us on the Oakland County Megacast. Mike, if people are, working to get into fishing as for those therapeutic pr purposes for the relaxation purposes or or just because they have had an interest in it and have never really done it what are those steps that they should take and what should they be prepared for early on as they're learning to be a successful fisherman um well the first thing is um i mean besides the the you know obvious like get a fishing pole and get a fishing license and all that stuff um I always tell people this too, and it's kind of funny, but I always say go on YouTube and that's like one of the best tools that we have in this generation is if you want to learn something, you no longer have to sign up for a class at, you know, at the community college or anything. You can go on YouTube and you can learn a lot. And I mean, I still go on YouTube and I've been, I've been fishing for a living full time for years and I still go on YouTube all the time and I learn from other people. Um, but if you go on YouTube, you can learn tips, you can learn techniques, you can learn how to use different kinds of gear, different kinds of line, like any question you have pretty much about any industry nowadays is all available at your fingertips now on your phone. So uh, if you're going to get started in fishing, it's your first time going out, you don't know what you're doing, uh, just do a quick like 20 or 30 minutes on YouTube just so you know what you're doing correctly. You're not going to harm the fish that way. Learn how to do some fish safety, how to unhook a fish correctly. Um, you know, the, the slogan of my show and, and my brand is take care of the people you meet, the water you touch and the, the fish you catch. And I always preach that like crazy. And I want to make sure everyone realizes that when you go to a lake, you're responsible for not leaving things behind. You're responsible for taking care of the water, you're responsible for taking care of the fish that you catch, make sure they're safe. And you're also responsible for taking care of the people that you run into and encounter and you meet as well. So, um, you know, YouTube can teach you a lot, but having good character is probably a huge, huge thing I preach too, is, is if you're going out fishing, it's not just you, you know, nature was here first and we got to make sure we respect that and, you know, go out there and have a good time and, and just, if you want to learn more about it, you can go through my YouTube channel as well. Um, there's plenty of guys out there that have great YouTube channels uh, for learning how to fish and catch fish. But, um, you know, go out there and just and, and just do trial and error. I mean, that's kind of the best way to learn anything. Go out, you get to make memories that way. You get to build your own experiences that way. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. I, it's so much fun. I, I think fishing is one of the most... It's kind of like it's like playing a sport, but at the same time, you can do it mindlessly at some times. Like, you can just cast and let your, let your bait sit in the water and just just reflect and just think and just talk or have a meeting or do whatever you got to do. And then if you catch a fish, great. And you know, you just pay attention to your bait or you can take it extremely seriously and be hundred percent focused and pay attention to your technique and your, you know, there's so much going on. So fishing's a really unique, uh, really unique sport where you can kind of do it, you know, very, very lazily, or you can do it very um, attentive either way. Fishing has gone somewhat high tech which can be surprising to some people. Do you think that's taking some of the fun out of it? Oh, not at all. Evolution in any sport or any industry is, is key for um, for growth. And and a lot of the technology nowadays is very gimmicky anyway. I mean, like these like uh, electronically controlled fishing lures, like stuff like that. They're all gimmicks. Um, I always make a joke about how that's how you catch a fisherman out of fish, um, because the, a lot of these things are designed just for people to look at and go, oh, it blinks as blinking lights. I'm going to buy that. And it doesn't really change the effectiveness or really do much for actual fishing. Um, but as far as technology and improvements in the fishing world itself, um, you know, it, it's only going to help the sport. It helps people, you know, if, if you go out for your first time catching or go out trying to catch a fish and you have a lot of the newer technology, the newer reels, some of the newer technology in the fishing line, um, some of the new advanced baits, you have more of a chance of catching fish. And if you have more of a chance catching fish, you have more of a chance loving what you're doing and spreading it to your friends and telling people how much fun you had. So I think the advancements are, are amazing. And um, it's just a matter of, of what advancements, I guess. The gimmicky ones are, are always going to be there in every industry. Um, but I, I think that the, the improvements in the fishing industry have been amazing. And I mostly kayak fish, too. So the improvements in the kayak world alone in the last five years have just been, been game-changing. I mean, the boats now you can stand up and walk around on. 
Um, I've been in the ocean multiple times in my kayak and, and, you know, never flip over. Um, I stand up on top of my seat in 30 mile an hour winds now. I mean, th these kayaks are amazing. So advancements like technology and, and gear is just definitely key for the growth of the sport. What's your favorite fishing spot? Uh, in Michigan or overall? Let's say in Michigan and overall. Okay. Uh, that's, a, that's a tough question because in Michigan, I mean, there's, Michigan has so many lakes. I mean, you know, the area I live in over here is uh, there's four lakes in my neighborhood and you can never be within or you can never be more than five minutes away from water in the state anyway. But um, my favorite lake in the state and um, it's kind of like my little secret spot, but I mean, it's a public lake and I grew up on it. But Cedar Island Lake and White Lake um, is my favorite lake. It's I catch nine species now. I've caught that lake for over 20 years. And I can go out there any day and any weather conditions and pretty much know where any of those species are and do pretty well with them. Um, and it's a pretty peaceful lake. Everyone out there is very friendly. I mean, every boat that goes by waves to you. It's just it's one of those lakes where you just feel like home. It's like the cheers of lakes. So I really like Cedar Island Lake a lot. I think it's just a great spot to be. That's a really small public launch, though, so it's hard to get in there sometimes, but it's such a good spot. Um, overall, I would say my favorite spot to fish that I've been and uh, this might surprise people uh, because a, my answer used to be Texas because of all the saltwater species that I fish for in the Gulf. Um, but it actually changed in the last year. Um, my favorite spot I've ever fished in the entire country is actually Ohio, uh, which surprises people every time I say that because there's so many great bodies of water all over the country. Um, I love fishing down south. But in Ohio, there is a hidden rock quarry that I go to every year. And it's a very large rock quarry and it's public and there's... I mean, 35 foot visibility, you can see crystal clear all the way down. It's just one of the most beautiful. I call that place my therapy session because when I go there, I really have a hard time thinking of anything else besides just how beautiful it is. So there's a place in Ohio that I go to that's probably my number one spot that I kind of keep hidden, but it is public. And, you know, it's, it's just one of those places that I can sit out there with no fishing pole and float for hours and get the same, you know, the same relaxation I would if I'm fishing. Mike, anything else for us today before we let you go? Um, yeah, I just want to encourage everybody to go, uh, follow their passions. You know, don't be afraid to take a jump. Don't be afraid to take a risk. And, uh, you know, sometimes risks pay off to great rewards and sometimes they pay off to a learning lesson, but either way you won't regret it if you try it. So don't be afraid to take that jump and uh, make sure you check out the Bass Watch Hunter TV show on YouTube, Instagram, um, Twitter, TikTok, and on the pursuit channel every week. Well, Mike, we thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Appreciate it as well. Mike McKinstry of Basquatch Hunter TV with us on the Oakland County Megacast.